Welcome to Health Alert. I'm Pam Butler. Today we're going to talk about exercise and a marathon of interest. And joining me is Tyron Taylor. He is an exercise physiologist with St. John Health Club. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Now before we start looking at exercise and the benefits and what we really need to do to get ourselves ready for a thing such as a marathon, tell me a little bit about exercise physiology for people that don't know what that's all about. Okay. Well, exercise physiology is pretty much the study of, of the body. Uh, as it relates to exercise and all the adaptations that it goes through, uh, you know, when, uh, when you're training. And so, and all the small things on the, on the muscular level uh, that takes place uh, when you're training. Um, and then, uh, you know, all the things that uh, happen on the outside, you know, you lose weight, you look a little bit slimmer, but it's <laughs> pretty much, it's just a study uh, of exercises and the, uh, and the changes. Okay, because we as a consumer look at the benefits of the outside. Right. Now, if there are people who are interested in becoming exercise physiologists, especially youth in school, or mm -hmm. people that are changing careers, what kind of things do they need to look at taking? I mean, people sometimes don't want chemistry or math or things like that. What are some right. of the things that would be helpful? Um, you know, of, of course, you always got your basics, you know, in, in school, but uh, for instance, if, if you are in high school, you know, you can start, you know, going to gyms, uh, getting yourself exposed to um, exercise and, and things like that. Some of the classes uh, you want to look for is uh, anatomy and physiology, um, biomechanics is another one. Then you have all kind of uh, health classes like nutrition that you'll take, um, instruments, uh, in exercise science, meaning, you know, how do you um, perform an EKG, treadmill stress test, uh, modified Bruce test is, is what they call to mm -hmm. test your uh, aerobic capacity. Mm -hmm. And so you have a, a, a core group of classes that usually uh, most universities, you know, they all have very similar core classes. And, and some of the ones I just men mentioned are uh, would be listed. Now when you think about that, we have heard of a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. Can exercise physiologists be personal trainers or is that totally different? No, it's not. Um, now you can get a personal training certification. Uh, there's a lot of certifications out there, mm -hmm. but there are a few that are considered gold standard um, in, the, in the field. And so the difference between a personal trainer and an exercise physiologist is um, the exercise physiologist would have uh, a certain amount of hours, let's say in cardiac uh, rehab, pulmonary rehab. They will also uh, hold a four-year degree um, in, in maybe like uh, health and human performance, okay. um, uh, health and wellness, uh, different uh, subjects like that. So uh, the exercise physiologist has you know, a four-year degree, uh, more education uh, under their belt as opposed to a personal trainer who can get a certificate that you can okay. study for, you know, up about, you know, two months, three months, and mm -hmm. then you can take a test which certifies you to become a personal trainer. Okay, now let me ask this question. At St. John's, mm -hmm. then, in terms of the health club with an exercise physiologist, if we were to come to such a health club, what can we expect to see or what will you you do with us. I mean, is there an assessment that happens? And we are in our other segments going to talk about the benefits yes. of, of exercise and okay. running and things in preparation. But what can they expect to to see? You know, at the health club, at St. John Health Club, what I what I really love about it is the atmosphere. Uh, it's a medical-based facility, uh, unlike you know any other. It's not like your typical goals gym or 24-hour fitness. Uh, we really take a holistic approach. Um, you know, and so we deal with a large uh, variety of, of the population. We have young people, we have seniors, um, we have people who are healthy, we have people with um, diabetes, people with cardiac issues, people with pulmonary issues, uh, people with chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we have a very dynamic staff that's able to deal with a wide variety, you know, of the population, no matter what kind of issues they have. Okay. Um, when people first join, uh, they do get an initial fitness assessment. And that's where we sit down with them and we talk about their goals, uh, their past exercise history, uh, any orthopedic issues, any medical conditions uh, that they may have. From that, uh, you know, we take that and we do a fitness assessment, uh, checking their muscle endurance, flexibility, uh, their aerobic capacity, um, a whole number of things. And then once we get that snapshot, of where they at right you know right then and there mm -hmm. you know at that time and then we take them out to the floor we design a program specifically for them um, to reach their goals whether that's weight loss uh, I want to add weight and bulk up I want to get six-pack abs or you know or <laughs> I want to lower my blood pressure you know I want to get my right. cholesterol down 
And so we take more of a uh, clinical approach uh, at a at a medical based uh, type type facility. Now, with that approach, because you talked about exercise physiologists mm -hmm. having um, sort of knowledge and and coursework in nutrition. At St. John's, for instance, those types of health clubs that are medically based, do you incorporate the dietary component too? Because sometimes we might go to a fitness center or a health club and we, if our goal is to lose weight and get those six pack abs, or right. are there four pack? There? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe two. Uh, then we want to look at uh, not putting it all back on because our diet is not very good. Right. So do you work with that as well in a health based health club? Yes, you know, and uh, one thing I, I love about the health club as well is that up under the health club, you know, we, we have a couple of different departments. We have our uh, healthy lifestyles department. That oh. department really focuses in on nutrition, weight loss uh, part of, you know, uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. We have a cardiac pulmonary side a um, or cardiac side and then a pulmonary side. Uh, and then an aquatic side. Um, and so we have all these different areas to where, okay, you can come to the fitness side, you know, start exercise routine, get yourself, uh, you know, good and fit and on a pretty good routine, you know, okay. just getting used to coming in two or three days a week working out. Uh, There's gonna come to a point where you hit a plateau. Okay, so now you need to start uh, focusing in on your nutrition. And so at that point, you know, we can send them up to the dietitian. Okay. You know, we have all kind of tests that they can do that uh, tells, you know, how many calories they burn. Uh, that way they can prescribe a more detailed um, uh, nutritional plan uh, for them. Okay. And so you got the nutrition part of it, you know, and you got your exercise part. It's really just a, a one-stop shop. Okay. Now with this, let me ask this other question, mm -hmm. then we will get into our other portions of this. Um, are there exercises or things that you, being in that type of facility, would sort of prescribe for people to do at home? that can continue with the progress that you're making there or is it only in that health club setting? No, uh, you know, we can, in, it really depends on what the client mm -hmm. or member wants. Um, you know, we would definitely give them a routine that they could perform here uh, at home. But a lot of times, you know, people can't get, uh, I mean, excuse me, that they could perform at the club. But a lot of times, you know, people can't, you know, get out the house and uh, right. or maybe they're traveling. And so we can prescribe them some, some things that they can do at home with minimal equipment, you know, using body weight um, and those type of deals, uh, stretches. I mean, you can do crunches and core work at home, uh, like I said, with, with minimal equipment. Push-ups and squats are like the best, you know. So they you can are. Do those all day long. <laughs> Just get up out of bed, do 10 push-ups, 10 squats. <laughs> okay. And even things that you can do like in a workplace setting that you right. can help us with that type of right. thing because there are little things you could do sitting at your desk or there are. taking a break that, you know, you can help us with and we can get more benefits. Yes. You know, about every 30 minutes or so, especially if you have a desk job, you should get up move around and, and stretch, you know. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, when you first get to work, you know, you're, you're pretty upright maybe right. if, if, if you're working at a computer, but eventually your shoulders <laughs> start to creep forward, That's you true. know, and the next thing you know, you're in this slouch position. So from time to time, you know, sit up, move mm -hmm. around, get the shoulders back, stretch your legs out. You know, there's all kind of things that you can do, but the main thing I would say, um, you know, stuff that you can do at work is to get up, you know, every 30 minutes. Just just get up, you know, get and up stretch. And move. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to take a really quick break and then we're going to come back and look more specifically at exercise and the different types and running and preparation and what is it doing to our body as well as okay. for our body. All so right. stay put. All right. And you stay put. We'll be right back. The 9-11 Memorial is for my 343 brothers who didn't make it. And for my brother. This shows the world that we can rebuild. And that we are strong. It's for the heroes like my dad. This year, the National September 11th Memorial opens in New York City. Join us to honor, remember, and reunite. You can help right now by texting the word HOPE to 80088 to give $10. Welcome back to continue our discussion talking about exercise and running and preparation for a marathon. Joining me again is Tyrone Taylor. He's an exercise physiologist at St. John's Health Club or Health Center. Welcome back. Thank you. Now let's jump in. That was really exciting for the first half because now I'm pumped up. All we're right. going to get ready. So <laughs> tell me a little bit then about um, the benefits of running or exercise or doing different kinds of exercises. I mean, you might think about running, but are there other things that we can do 
swimming or or other kinds of things. So start me off with that. Okay, you know, uh, running is, is is definitely a a, a good. Uh, exercise and a good way to burn a tremendous amount of calories. I mean, you can burn a lot of calories uh, running at a, a pretty moderate pace or intensity, mm -hmm. um, you know, for up to an hour. I mean, you can burn up to 500 calories uh, or so. Um, but the thing about running is you don't want to, you know, do too much too fast. Um, it seems pretty easy. Okay, running, how hard can that be? I'm just going to get out of my bed and, and just go running. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of things that, you know, you need to look at before you start that is, you know, check with your physician to see if it's, you know, safe for you to run. You know, right. do you have knee issues? Uh, do you have, you know, arthritis or, um, you know, w will your joints be able to handle the poundage, you know, of running? So okay. if he clears you uh, to do that, the next thing I would say is, is go and spend some money and get a good quality pair of tennis shoes. You yes. know, have your feet examined, see what kind of um, um, foot you have, you know, whether you have, you know, a high arc or a low arc, mm -hmm. uh, they will be able to, you know, give you a shoe that fits your foot. Um, then, then once you have that down, uh, you know, so I would start with walking, especially for, for new runners, uh, intervals on like walking, running, you know, so maybe okay. walk for two minutes and jog for 30 seconds or so. And so, I mean, that's, that's just simple right there. Just, you know, first get checked out by your doctor, uh, get you a good pair of shoes, uh, and then just take it out to either the health club or, you know, your local trail or river parks, wherever you want to go, um, and, and, and just start from there. Just start walking and then a little jog in between. Now, let me ask this question, too. With, with running, uh, are we targeting certain portions of our body? For instance, sometimes it seems like um, you may run, whether it's on the treadmill, and tell me a little bit about elliptical. I switched from treadmill mm -hmm. to elliptical. Um, but I can be doing some other things, and it seems like that muscle didn't get worked when I was doing that other stuff. Right. So are there right. certain muscle groups that running or those kinds of things are targeting compared to others so we don't see it as a complete, complete workout? Right. Um, I mean, really running, it, it kind of hits everything. You got your arms moving there. Uh, it's mainly aerobic, you know, so okay. it, it is going to work your cardiovascular system, your lungs and, and, and your heart. Uh, but, you know, your legs, all your leg muscles are working there. Uh, and things like that. Now, you mentioned that you switched over to the, uh, the elliptical, elliptical uh -huh. and a lot of people do that, and a lot of people do that for cross-training uh, because of the pounding that it takes or it gives to your knees, to your back, and to other joints if you're not, you know, strong in those areas uh, mm -hmm. already. Uh, the elliptical is a lot less uh, impactful on your joints, uh, but it still um, gives give the legs the same type of workout. You know, it still works those same muscles. It keeps them fresh, uh, but without the impact. And that's a great way to cross train, you know. So if you're a runner, and a lot of runners, you know, uh, elite runners, you know, mm -hmm. they may run, you know, four or five, you know, six times uh, a week. Uh, now, all those days, will they spend, you know, running out on the road or on the treadmill? Mm -hmm. uh, no, they'll switch it up. They'll go swimming. You know, okay. and work other muscle groups, incorporate other muscle groups in, into their routine. Uh, they also do some elliptical or biking or stationary bike, I mean, uh, or uh, stair stepper. All okay. of those uh, still keeps the legs fresh, works the legs, but it doesn't put a lot of stress on the joints. And cross training is very important to prevent injury. It is, and let me ask this question about cross training because one of the reasons I switched to the elliptical, which I really do like, was because my treadmill finally died after about 10 <laughs> years. So <laughs> it was like reevaluating. then I found out the benefits of the elliptical, the yes. less impact and things such as that. But can we also add other kinds of things? You mentioned swimming in that, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about the cross training phenomenon. Right. I just recently started with kickboxing. All right. All <laughs> Watch right. out That's there great. now. Good endurance uh, Yeah, so can you look at the cross-training concept with other things like that, or does it have to really be um, a sport such as um, swimming or, or, or the biking, or right. can it be other things like, like the kickboxing? Um, for your cardiovascular mm -hmm. benefit, you know, um, all the things that we mentioned, swimming, biking, um, uh, stair stepper, those are all good. I mean, but you could switch over to things like jump rope. Okay. Um, a Zumba class would be good. Yeah, I did that too. You know, dancing, it's <laughs> yes. aerobic, it's, uh -huh. it's fun, uh, but also strength training. You know, you do want to add the strength training mm -hmm. aspect uh, into it as well uh, to keep the muscles toned uh, and keep them strong. Um, and then just, you know, uh, classes that you could take, you know, uh, so like an aerobic class, 
uh, step class would be good. Yoga for stretching. Definitely with the muscles. yoga because flex uh, flexibility is is definitely important. You know, for runners, especially flexibility in the in the hips, uh, mainly. Okay, and when you mentioned too about the weights, you know, I do weights three times mm -hmm. a week. Is there a way we should look at weights? Should we do them every day? I mean, I've gone to three days a week every other day because mm -hmm. I've heard you shouldn't do it every single day. And does that sort of roll into that whole thing of preparation for running and things like that? Or do you need to do it, do it more frequently? Or does it just depend on the person? It, it depends on the person and their goal. Um, but y you shouldn't work out on consecutive days. You definitely need to have a day in between uh, for your body to rest and, and rebuild. Because that's when you actually make those improvements in, in strength or muscular mm -hmm. endurance is when your body's resting. When you're actually working out, you're actually breaking down that muscle breaking it down and when you're at rest that's when it rebuilds and it comes back stronger either with you know with more okay. endurance or or more strength so it's very important to have those days in between uh to rest uh typically you know for runners uh two days a week would be good to maintain muscle mass mm -hmm. as far as uh, strength training goes so running you know three or four i would say run three days a week uh, do some cross training on 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 the other two days where you could do like swimming and you know some stretching uh, and then you can uh, maybe do a, a recumbent bike and and some strength training okay. so it's, okay. it's it's good to mix it up let me ask this question too about this whole benefits with running and exercise i've often heard too about sort of like the afterburn concept that once you have actually stopped the workout or running or those types of things that your body is still continuing to break Burn down calories. Y yeah the, yes. the calories is that t tell me a little bit about that yeah um you know especially with with strength training um now aerobic uh, activities mm -hmm. does it as well you know you you get your uh, metabolism up and even afterwards, your metabolism still continues uh, to be fairly rapid and burn calories uh, at a fairly high rate um, up to 30, 45 minutes after. Okay. Uh, weight training does the exact same thing, but longer. And so, uh, for instance, if, if you take uh, one of our classes, uh, Blast and Furious, uh, it's a high intensity- <laughs> I like that um, name. <laughs> interval training type uh -huh. class where we really want to focus on maintaining a high heart rate. Okay. Um, in one hour, you can burn 500 calories Whoa. All right, in this class, and actually it's a 45 minute class, mm -hmm. um, but then you could burn up to an additional 200 calories, you know, up to two hours after that. So we're talking about 700 calories, you know, within, you know, wow. three hours or so. And wow. so that's that's a pretty good deal. That's a very um, good deal. It, it, same thing in our boot camp. You know, uh, we had one uh, of our participants were a uh, caloric expenditure mm -hmm. deal. You know, it showed how many calories she was burning during class. You know, she burned like 600 mm -hmm. calories in our boot camp class. And then two hours later, you know, she'll burn up to like 200 more calories. I was like, man, that is a lot of calories burning because you done revved up that metabolism and now it's ready to go. And that's one of the good things about, uh, you know, exercise and, and running in particular, you know, it gives you that sense of, or, or that feeling of happiness and, and, and like, does. man, I just completed something. It does. And what it is pretty much is just, uh, you know, you are releasing those endorphins, you know, those, right. that happy chemical that after you run, right. man, you feel so good, you feel energized. Uh, you know, some other benefits is, you know, lowers your, your blood pressure. It can help increase your, your cholesterol uh, and it helps the arteries, you know. Okay. Uh, it helps those arteries expand and contract, expand and contract. When you're running, that's what okay. it does. Okay. And so afterwards, uh, what you get, a benefit of that, is now your heart is, is able to pump out more blood to okay. your muscles. You know, it makes it more efficient. And so that's an extremely Extreme good, good benefit, benefit of, of running. Thank you so much. And you want to decrease that cholesterol, you definitely but want you want to increase the happy cholesterol. That's right. That's Thank right. you so much for joining me. And Thank I think I may have me. called you Tyrone when we get the second segment, but it's Tyron. Correct. Don't, don't call Tyrone the <laughs> exercise physiologist. Call Tyron. That's right. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Pam. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're going to talk about a marathon. We'll be right back. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! <laughs> yeah. 
Welcome back to continue our discussion talking about exercise and a marathon. Joining me now for the marathon segment is Kristen Ware. She is a PR director with the Williams Route 66 Marathon. Got Correct. it. Welcome to the program. Thank you. We're glad to be here. Now tell us a little bit about the Williams Route 66 Marathon because people may have heard about Route 66 as a road or something. Right. Okay. Well, we uh, d it was developed, uh, this is the sixth running, so it was developed uh, six years ago. And what we really do want to get across to people is we have something for every fitness level, every age group, every, if you've run 10 marathons, come and run ours. If you haven't run a mile, come and do our one mile fun run with your kids walk it, run it, you know, do half and half, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. We've got a uh, marathon, which for those that don't know is 26.2 miles. Whoa. We've got a half marathon. Okay. We have a five person marathon relay, which we really try and encourage people that are in that maybe three to five mile mm -hmm. eight range. If you're getting out in the morning and doing, you know, three or four miles, get a few of your friends and come out and run the relay. You still get a fun finisher's medal at the end something to do as a group okay. with that team encouragement. Um, and then we have a 5K and a one mile fun run. Now how young, because you said it's something for everyone and bring bring your child out, um, how young? I mean, what if you've got uh, a three or four year, of course they gotta be able to move and walk. Right. And three and four year olds can, do you have something for tykes that little to do? We do, I mean, bring them out to the to the one mile fun run. It's, a, it's an untimed event, so very laid back, very fun. You know, carry them on your shoulders for half the time. If they only wanna, you know, walk or, you know, jog a couple hundred yards, then bring your stroller or something like that and we it's a one thing we've experienced in the marathon is getting people out to see what goes on really is a good funnel to get people involved in running and and physical fitness we try and offer those smaller runs to get people to see what goes on at a marathon there are so many people that you would consider normal mm -hmm. that that run marathons a, a lot of people have this image in their head of this hundred pound pure muscle, you know, <laughs> right, runner right, that can, right. you know, just run full out mm -hmm. for 26 miles. And, and it's really not. We've got people that walk in our marathon and half marathon and people of all body types and ages and, you know, sizes. And it's just a great inspiration for people to see someone that maybe kind of mirrors mirrors themselves mm -hmm. out there doing something amazing like running 26.2 miles. So we really try and get people involved through even coming out to our post-race party, which has a car show, a classic car show to kind of tie in with that Route 66 theme, Okay. as well as the Health and Fitness Expo, which is where typically most runners just pick up their packets, but it's a great expo of running and fitness and healthy lifestyle, you know, products and services. We've got Blue Cross and Blue Shield out there that does um, health tests like a cholesterol screening. Okay. And then St. John, who we met earlier, will be on hand with different experts throughout the two days answering questions that people might have. So we really do try to encourage the health of the entire community and not just someone who's participating in our race. Okay, now with the Williams Route 66 Marathon, in general, when does it tend to occur each year? Because uh, people may see this when it's already occurred for this year, but, but they would want to know about next year. Does it tend to happen the same point in time each year? Yes, it does. Uh, we have the, the main event weekend is November 19th and 20th this year. Okay. Uh, the 5K and the one mile fun run are on Saturday, and the marathon, the half marathon, and the marathon relay are on Sunday. And it's always the weekend before Thanksgiving. So okay. come out, do your work, and then eat guilt-free <laughs> on Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay. But we also have another race that's kind of our sister race. It's the Williams Route 66 Quarter Marathon. And that's mm -hmm. every year now in October. Typically, uh, the I believe it's the second Saturday of the month, um, somewhere around there. We haven't. This is the first right. year it's in October, and that's like a 6.55 mile race. So that's kind of a, a stair step. You know, we try and like I said, we try and provide something for all skill levels. Now, with the one that typically occurs in is going to occur in October, mm -hmm. is that for all ages where people can bring their children, or is that for a certain age group? That's for, for anyone. I don't believe we have a, an age cutoff in that. The marathon, you do have to be 16 years old. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the industry standard of, you know, how old does someone have to be to encounter, you know, a, a physical feat like this. Okay. But um, I, I don't believe there's an age age uh, limit on the, the quarter marathon. Okay, because I will put up information at the end of the show how people can get in touch with you. So um, if it's already gone for this year, they can still find out specifically each year so they can get prepared and start to participate. Absolutely. Now with this, with the marathon, 
um, because sometimes you have people who are the more casual runners, like mm -hmm. you said, who still could be a part of this, thinking that they're competing in this marathon against all ages, or is there an area where it's only your age group that you're running against? Maybe it's not the marathon, but other parts of this. Uh, Kind of, I okay. guess I'll say. We do have age groups, like if you're if you're competitive mm -hmm, and you, mm -hmm. you would like to win an award, uh, we do have age age um, cutoffs. So I forget off the top of my head what they are, but you know, if you're in the okay. 25 to 29 age group and you place first in that age group, mm -hmm. for, uh, male and female, then you would get an award. But uh, the best part about any marathon mm -hmm. is everyone gets a finisher's medal. So if you cross the finish line, you get an awesome medal that shows your accomplishment. And one thing that the Route 66 Marathon does that not a lot of marathons do um, is the My First Marathon medal. Mm -hmm. So if you're running your first marathon in Tulsa at the Williams Route 66, you get a special medal that says My First Marathon. And cool. so very, you know, we try to encourage people to, to come out and do this because it, it really is a life-changing experience. It makes okay. you healthier, stronger, more confident, and you feel like, I can do anything. If mm -hmm. I put my mind mm -hmm. to it and dedicate the time to it, I really <coughs> right. can accomplish whatever I want to. Especially with the preparation portion that uh, we talked about with Tyron yes. in, in the first segment, first couple of segments. Let me ask this question. Um, okay, for people that may not know, are mm -hmm. there entry fees um, that, that would be involved so they would definitely need to call and find out about that kind of structure? There are entry fees. Uh, the best way to check it out is route66marathon.com okay. or quartermarathon.com. And both those, they kind of change based on date. So, you know, it depends on what date or when you're registering, how much it's, it's going to cost. Um, and you can also register at the expo if the races aren't sold out. It is a little higher to register, you know, the, the weekend of the event. But if they're not sold out, that's a possibility too. Okay. And then can people come from all over? Absolutely. It's not just something that you're looking at localized to the Tulsa or Oklahoma area? Right. We, it's a great tourist attraction for Tulsa. It's, it's great. One of the things this year we're marketing to the 50 States Marathon Club. They have a VIP okay. tent. They have a special medal. And, you know, that attracts tourism dollars to Tulsa as well. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And uh, maybe I'll see you at a marathon. Absolutely. At the Williams Route 66 Marathon. We hope so. Thank you. Well, that's our show for Health Alert. I'm Pam Butler. I'd love to hear your questions, comments, or suggestions for future shows. Please write me at Health Alert USA, P.O. Box 50913, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74150. Or if you're on the email trail, please email me at healthalertusa at gmail.com. And also visit me on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash healthalertusa. And remember, start to get in shape, get those endorphins circulating, and get out there and do this Route 66, the Williams Route 66 Marathon. Take care and be safe.